Hello, it's Ulysses here from SSW TV. And like you, I have many thousands of emails. And sometimes I really need to quickly hone in and find the one that I'm looking for. And I'm hoping I can give you nine tips today on how best to do that. Let's get started. Tip number one is giving the person I'm talking to focus. So let's give a scenario. Uh, I've just got a call from someone, say Adam, and he, who's Adam? I can't remember. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly type in Adam here. Now, as you can see down the bottom left, this gives me more than a thousand records. It caps out at about a thousand when it's doing a quick search. Uh, so this isn't really helping. So the problems with what I've just done uh, I'm searching the current mailbox, which is everything. Deleted items, as you can see here, uh, sent items, junk, whatever, everything, right? So I know that this email I'm looking for is in my current inbox. So I'm going to look at the current folder, seeing as I'm in my inbox. And also, I know that this email was from Adam. So just those two tips have brought the number of results down to 14. And those, that one on its own is probably the most useful thing that I can teach you, just using from and limiting the scope of your search to the current folder, if, if that's what you're looking for. By the way, when you search from your inbox, the default is always the full current mailbox. All right, tip number two is focusing on the person. So this is uh, similar to what I just did. Let's, let's open up a new scenario here. So I got an email from Adam a long time ago about making changes to how we see data for one of our clients called Rocked. Um, and this tip is just using the information I know some of the people involved. So I know that it was about Rocked. So I'll do a quick search for Rocked and I've got, again, more than a thousand records. That's not helping. Okay, I know it was from Adam. Okay, that helps. I'm down to 31. I also know it was directly to me. There we go, down to 25. And the one I'm looking for if I just look down the list, I know, for instance, also that Seth was involved. Ah, uh, there we go. It's, there it is. That's the email I'm looking for. Time Pro Add Days Outstanding. Okay, excellent. Now I have the context. I remember the task, and I can talk to Adam about it. Now let's try using a few different tools to hone in again on that same email. So let's say now this is tip number three. I want to focus on the subject instead of the person. So instead of from Adam to Yuli, I know that this was something about Time Pro. So again, I start again. I'll delete, I'll delete my search string. I know it was about rocked. Uh, and I know specifically in the subject was the word time pro because at SSW we have a rule that says that you always look, uh, you always put either the client name or the project name into the subject. So I can say subject colon time pro. Boom, there it is. With just those two little bits, straight away I found that email again. There it is. Had days outstanding. All right, excellent. So that was really helpful. That was using the subject. Um, again, let's keep looking for the same, same email using a few different tools. So this now is tip number four. And these next few tips, by the way, are syntax tips you can use not just in Outlook, but also in Google, in SharePoint, in Teams, anything like that. It can be really useful. So let's say I know very little about this. I can't really remember. I know it was something to do with Rocked. I know Seth was involved. I know Adam was involved, uh, but that's not really helping. That still has 200, 205 emails. Okay, so what do I know that was not involved? This is tip number four, which is using negatives, the dash symbol, the negative symbol. So as I start honing in, I can start eliminating things, searching by elimination. I know that this had nothing to do with invoices. So I go minus invoice, down to 83. Excellent. Okay, what else we got here? Well, we've got a lot of other developer names in here. I know that Chris wasn't involved. I know that Gabe wasn't involved. I know that Costa wasn't involved. There we go, I'm down to 14 items, and there it is, that was the one I was looking for. So you search by elimination using the negative symbol is very powerful if you have little information up front and you need kind of iterative attempts at looking at it, looking at the results going, no, it wasn't that, it wasn't that, until you find what it was. All right, now tip number five is using quotation marks. This is extremely powerful again. So we know that Days outstanding was in the email somewhere, right? If I'd search for days outstanding, again, over a thousand records, that's not helping. But I know that it wasn't just those two words, it was the actual phrase, days outstanding, that was in the email. If I put quotation marks, instead of looking for days and looking for outstanding, now it looks for that exact phrase, days outstanding. I'm down to 65 records, and as it happens, here it is right at the top. That's the one I'm looking for.
All right, now extending from this a little bit, I know uh, when I'm looking, it wasn't just days outstanding, it was either add days outstanding or it was remove days outstanding, but I can't remember which one. So tip number six is combining two searches into one by using the or operator. So if I wanted to, I could say, okay, I, it, was e it was remove days outstanding. No, no, no results there. Okay, I'll try add days outstanding. I've put in extra spaces, but that's fixed it anyway. Yes, okay, that's what it was. So instead of doing those two searches, if I wanted, I could combine them by saying add uppercase or remove days outstanding. There we go. Now this shows me all the records for remove days outstanding and for add days outstanding all in one search. And there's my email again. All right, let's try a different scenario now. So now with tip number seven, I'm looking for a file. I wanna, how do I find a file? So the scenario is I'm looking for a particular, it was either a Word doc or a PDF, but I can't remember. It was in an email, it was to rocked, and it was, it was a terms and conditions. So I'm looking for something with our terms in it. Uh, oh, surely that would work. No, we've got 396 records. Oh God, how am I gonna find it? Well, the way you do it is you click has attachments. That limits me to only finding emails that have an attachment. Now, using my previous elimination method, I can see most of these are to do with invoices. And I know this isn't to do with invoices. So minus invoice gets rid of all of them. We're down to only 11 items and there it is, the terms and conditions. So very useful, has attachments. Okay, now let's get even more specific. Tip eight is about where you're not just looking for an attachment, but you're looking for a piece of content that exists within an attachment. So I know, let's give another scenario. I know that uh, my client, Rocked again, has called me up and, and queried uh, what was in a particular timesheet on a particular date. So he's given me the date. The date is the 20th of the 7th, 2021. So I can search for that date, gives me a lot of options, but I know that that was specifically within the PDF that I sent him. So I'm saying it's an attachment, colon, and now it's showing me only emails with an attachment which have content which says that date. Again, I know it was rocked and I'm down to one record now. Even if I hit more, there it is. If I open that up, there's the date, that was the timesheet. Okay, now I can say, okay, that's what that was about and resend him this attachment if I want to. So now let's remember that date, 20th of the 7th, 2021. And for, we'll use this for our final tip, tip number nine, which is focusing on the date received. So in this instance, he did a timesheet on the 20th of the 7th. So I know I would have sent it to him after that date. So let me focus on the date by saying the received date is greater than the 20th of the 7th, 2021. And it was to do with rocked. All right, now, oh, I misspelled received, that won't help. Okay, so. Heads up, you need to do this in American date format. So this will be 20th, uh, sorry, 7th of the 20. There we go. Now, if I look down here, I can see it's only showing me emails after that date. So again, that's the invoice. I can open it up. And there it is, 20th to 7th. I found that same attachment just by using the date. So those are my nine tips. Read more at the rule below. Do you disagree with any? Do you have any more that I haven't thought of? Put them all in the comments below, I'd love to see them. Until then, this is Ulysses from SSWTV, checking out. Thanks.